What else you got? Sorcerer. Now, oh. I know you've been leading up to this. So, no, not really. All right, let me try and sell this to okay. you. Okay, yeah. bearing in mind that you are unbelievably cynical about this, all right? So, essentially, William Friedkin had an incredible time at the beginning of the 1970s. He made French Connection, for which he won Best Director and Best Film, which, which when he'd finished the, making the movie, he did he famously said to Phil D'Antoni, the producer, well, I think we got away with it, but I tell you, we're not going to win any awards with this thing. And then French Connection then became pretty much the definitive 70s crime pick. He then went on to make The Exorcist, which we all know I've bored everybody rigid about how it's the greatest movie ever made. But even if you don't agree with that, which most people don't, you'd have to agree that it is up there in the top horror movies. Whenever people do, you know, what are the best horror movies of all time, it always comes out. Exorcist, Shining, you know, these are the, the, mm -hmm. the two titles that always come out. With so, you so far. You're fine. So then, basically, able to do whatever he wanted to do, he decided to do something which was very strange, which was to, to do a remake of Wages of Fear, which is a very, very famous uh, film, which is actually based on a novel which is less famous. And he was able to do it because the rights rested with the novelist. And... There's a four-year gap between Exorcist coming out and Sorcerer coming out. And Sorcerer is uh, is a film which takes the premise of The Wages of Fear, which is a group of people, all of whom are sort of, you know, things have fallen apart. They're in the middle of nowhere. They need to find something to be able to get out. What happens is there is a... There is, as best to condense this, there is very, very volatile nitroglycerine, which has to be transported from point A to point B over absolutely treacherous terrain. And if, if it jogs or if it bounces, it will explode. And there are people driving the trucks, and that's pretty much the setup. So in okay. the case of this, um, he did the screenplay with uh, Waylon Green, Wally Green, who had written Wild Bunch, and they thought that the idea of the film, which was about people from disparate backgrounds having to work together or die was interesting in terms of the world situation, but they also just loved the fact that what the story was was a real tense edge-of-your-seat thriller. So they rewrote it, they reconstructed it. They had originally written the lead role for Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen wanted to do it. He said it was the best script he'd ever read, but he wanted to do it in America. And Freakin said, oh, I'm going to shoot in the Dominican Republic. And Steve McQueen said, well, I've just married Ali McGraw. I don't want to make it in the Dominican Republic. So they ended up making it with Roy Scheider in the lead. The film took... Two years in the actual making of the film, another year before in the planning. And it was a massive, uh, you know, uh, 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 thing to put on. It involved two studios because it cost so much money. The studios didn't get to see any of it. Friedkin and his cast and his editors all thought they were making the best film they'd ever made. And then the film opened and it tanked. It opened in 1977 and it absolutely tanked. And it's one of those films that's credited along with Heaven's Gate, as having killed the idea of the auteur director stone dead in terms of mainstream Hollywood cinema. This is what happens. You give people the freedom to go and do whatever they want and they make Heaven's Gate or they make Sorcerer. The difference is Heaven's Gate is a mess. Sorcerer is a masterpiece. And I have been banging the gong for Sorcerer for a very long time. A couple of years ago, there was a restored version of Sorcerer played in a 4K version at, uh, I think it was Venice. Now, and then it came out on Blu-ray in America. Now it's got a very brief theatrical release here in the UK, so you can see it properly on the big screen before it comes out on Blu-ray on Monday. It is one of the most gruelingly intense, stripped down, weirdly mean-spirited, absolutely edge-of-your-seat, nihilistic thrillers that American cinema has made in the you know past half century. It has a brilliant score, used rather sparingly, I have to say, by Tangerine Dream, who Friedkin had heard when he was he went out to Germany when he was doing some work on uh, uh, publicity for The Exorcist, and he went to see them playing in a church at midnight in the pitch dark. Right. And they played for four hours, and he loved them, and he said, that's it, I want you to score this next film. And he gave them the script, and they just then they sent these tapes that he got while he was in the middle of the jungle whilst filming this stuff. We, we, can we play a little bit of the, of the Tangerine Dream score? Like John Carpenter stuff. It, yes, but you know, or, or other way around, you know, John Carpenter like this. And these two trucks uh, basically crawling over this absolutely treacherous terrain, driven by four people who are, you know, terrible interpersonal conflicts, but they have to get from point A to point B during the course of it. There is this extraordinary sequence in which they have to get over a great big rope bridge that is swinging over a raging river, swinging backwards and forwards. Every time the truck moves forward an inch, it looks like the bridge is going to break. I mean, it is, it is breathtakingly 
visceral cinema. It is muscular. It is. It needs to be seen on a big screen. It's coming out on Monday on Blu-ray, and that's absolutely fine. And I, it, it's so great that it's finally being reassessed. People are now saying, "Wow, it's Freakin's best film." I tweeted something about it. And people said, "It's my, it's my favourite Freakin film." It was a total disaster when it came out, and it is one of those rare cases of a film which it's taken this long for people to wake up and go, "That is a masterpiece." And in 1977, it opened back to back with Star Wars oh. and and it just got wiped out well it, uh, anything would yeah exactly and the only thing and the whole world changed around it and it was out of step with itself and it, uh, I if you get a chance to see it on the big about 18 months ago we showed the, the the restoration at the plaza in Truro when it had just it just played at Venice and it was a packed house and people hadn't seen it they didn't know what to expect and they loved it they loved it, it is proper visceral muscular cinema which you can feel the rain you can feel the heft you can feel the creaking wood you can feel the gears the groaning of these engines it's it's a really really terrific film and i would love you to see it on the big screen i know you're not going to but there we go yeah okay well <laughs> I, I might go and see uh, bad mums okay but i will take you i'm listening to your advice i will let it percolate through and i'll see what happens okay